In the last section, we saw the basics of Euler v5 and WMB integration and all the MLOps goodness and what you can do with experiment tracking, visualization, and checkpoint logging, and all of that was automatic. On this, in this video, we'll just look at some of the more advanced stuff. So for example, how you can log the trading progress uh, in form of a tabular data on the entire data set. So here we have a table which compares the ground truth and prediction side by side on the entire data set across the epochs. And you can run all your queries. For example, I can sort, we have all the columns which contain the average confidence of each of the detected class. And I can sort by a particular class. I can write my own custom queries. So for example, if I want to look at the images that contain people out of all of the, or probably airplane, I can just do that. Like the prediction is not equal to zero and I will just filter all of that in my browser, run queries, more complex queries and look at the specific part of the data set which uh, I'm interested in or or certain part that the model does not perform that well and I want to optimize for that. And I can also compare across various runs. But yeah, let's first get started and see how we can, how you can get the same results, same table in your workspace. So I have set this up. Uh, it's pretty much the same as the previous video and in this one we can just use the colab because we just have to run one command which is uh, if you want to run this in your own system that's also fine but i'm just using this official colab i've just added this extra cell here now if you are new you don't know what this is what i'm talking about uh, you should watch the previous video or if this is a continuation of some playlist you should watch that uh, i'll probably have the link in description uh, yeah uh, just just go ahead and watch that if you don't know but yeah, you don't need to know that you can still continue watching this one Awesome. So, so if you know how you can train on Yolo v5, which is just you have to call uh, Python train.py and the name of the data set. If you don't pass in the data set, which is this, by default it will train on Coco 128. So I don't want to change it. I just want to use the same data set. And I will use this project because in the previous section we used the same project. Now, I will set the number of epochs to 10. Now, here's the interesting bit. And the thing that we'll do to get these fancy tables uh, on, like prediction tables on the dashboard. So I'll add this argument that is WNB specific argument for the integration. I'll add upload data flag. Now this will upload the entire data, but for logging these tables, we just need the validation set because we are logging the evaluation part of the, uh, the, the data set, not the entire data set. So doing this will also work, but why add extra overhead of uploading the entire data set? I can just pass my val data set. So if I upload the val data set, it will just use that and create these tables. So it will just log the data set once and then use that in every epoch itself. It will not log your data set multiple times, which is what something that we'll get back to. And then let me just re remove this let me reduce this to five so that we don't have to wait for a long time because we don't have very powerful GPU on Colab, which sort of makes me realize I should have used my own system, but now that I've decided to use it, let's just stick with it. Okay, so training starts and it's going to be usual. If you are not logged in to WNB, it will ask you to log in, which is pretty much the same. Now, as you can see, you'll get these sort of logs which say that adding directory to artifact, the data set is being uploaded as an artifact and then it will be used for that, so these are just the, the, those logs, right? And what I'll do is now I'll I'll wait for training to finish, and I'll pause this video, and I'll start it again once it is it is done. Okay, so it's it's finished training, and the first thing that you'll notice here uh, in the logs is that you get like the thing that interests us is you get this run link. So I've opened it opened it up here. So the first thing that you'll notice is what's different in this run from the previous dashboard is that you get this evaluation table and it contains the entire data set. Um, the predictions and ground truth side by side, you can just, let me just sort of do this. And let me just expand that a little bit. Okay, and other things like the media and the bounding box predictions are all still there. But as we've uploaded the data set, you get this this extra stuff right now here you have here you have the class scores of each and every class so for example if there are like five persons detected it will just average 
them the conferences and then it will show it, show it up here. So there are multiple use cases. First of all, you can just query based on classes in this case. So for example, I can just say, like I want to sort by, by bicycles in descending order of confidence. So all the images that have bicycle and it's pretty sure that we have like high confidence, it will just show up here. So basically what we're doing is we are just sort of querying stuff, filtering stuff um, in the browser. Now this, something like this would give you a lot of insights in your about your data set, like which models perform well or worse on a particular data point or a particular class. But to do that, you would have like on, on, on any system, you would have to write down your own scripts and then visualize them, which is a manual task, right? Now, this is the basics. Let's just get into more details uh, about what's happening here and what this is. So as I said, this is the ground truth and prediction table side by side in tabular fashion, but this is on the, for the last epoch, as you can see, right? So let's, let's open up the artifacts view and see what more advanced operations we can do on this. So let me just open it up. You'll see the evaluation table and let's open the latest best and the last one, which is like the alias, which all of this has been discussed in the previous section. So it loads up. Let me just expand this a little bit and then, all right, time to run our custom queries. So first of all, these images are interactive images, right? So I can hide a particular class. Uh, um, let's just say, let's stick with people. So if I open this up and I say, I don't want to look at person class because my, I know my model has a lot of has seen a lot of people, so it performs well there. I'll just hide them and I'll look at the other stuff. I can also do this on a global uh, scale, which is I can just come here and hide all the person from all the detections on all the rows, right? Which is pretty pretty cool, right? But yeah, what if I want to, I want to know if my model is confusing between say people and and elephant or, or people and airplane. I don't know if we have an image which, which has both people in it, elephant. So I'll just, I just want to look at those images. I can run a custom query right inside my browser. I'll just say, okay, I want to look at the predictions that have airplanes. So the confidence of airplane should not be zero. And then what I'll do is I'll combine it with an and statement. I can write as many queries. I can combine them and or, or uh, statements like this in the browser. And I'll say, I want to look at person. So both of them, like the images that contain both airplane and person should only show up and it will filter. Okay, probably it's not there. So maybe let's just try another. Um, person and say, okay, so let's try a uh, person and baseball bat. And then let's apply this. So it will just filter everything out. So there is three images and it, just, it had just filtered that out. So I view them, hide show stuff and, and I, I am, I'm good to go. And I've, I've made some analysis, but that's not it. You can also compare tables across uh, different epochs to see how it has improved over time. So what I'll do is I'll compare the last one with the first one. If I click on compare, uh, the first thing that it will, it will do is by default, it will just concatenate. This is the database language. Um, so I don't want to concatenate them. So as you can see, it has increased the number of rows. I want to compare them side by side. So I'll just change it to join. And once it, it's joining, um, it is, it will be joined on particular ID. So now our predictions and ground truths are side by side for both the epochs and it automatically infers the data type of the classes, class cores, which is, um, which are numeric data types. So it will just compare them using bar chart. So you can see which ones are more confident. In this case, we are just using transfer learning. So, I mean, there's not, no difference, but yeah, in your experiments, you can see a lot of difference, a lot of improvement over the class cores. But again, we can also like join it on any other uh, ID. So here I'm any other key, sorry. So I'll just choose to join it on ground truth because we don't want to see the ground truth twice. We know the ground truth will always remain the same, right? So now it will just show me my predictions of both the epochs, right? And yeah, that is it. So here I can compare my tables. I can just, you know, see them side by side, how it has improved or, or degraded and things like that. So this was tables. But there's more because of uh, the efficiency. We are logging, it might seem that we are logging the data sets, the entire validation set five times, but that's not the case. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you'll see here, the size is zero bytes. And for all of these, these tables, the size will be zero bytes. What, what's happening here is we are using the reference 
So if you'll see all of them are zero bytes, the images and data, we are using the reference to the already uploaded data set. So this command here, upload data, will upload the data set, the validation set. Here you can see that it is automatically versioned. But this contains the actual data. Here you can see the data size is seven megabytes. And we'll just reference that for all the tables. So you're logging the tables, essentially you're not using, you're not re-uploading any piece of image again. It's just using the one that has already been uploaded. So it's very efficient. So you get all of the, the insights to your model predictions and all of the, um, the ability to just run your custom queries on the data set in the browser without having to write your own personal scripts. You get all of that without any additional overhead related to the bandwidth or, or the data set upload. Uh, um, so yeah, and this is this is it. And then the next one, we'll see how you can actually version your data sets. And after that, we'll see how you can version your checkpoints and resume your runs directly using those checkpoints on any device, essentially making your pipelines device independent so that you can train on one device and resume it on another if it fails or even just if you want to. So yeah, that was it for this one.